So can you guys believe it's already March 1st? I am just absolutely shocked at how fast time is flying. I hope everybody had a great February. I was just running a quick report. I just got off a call with another coach, so I was kind of behind. But I calculated that as a team, we changed 412 lives in February. That is amazing. That is super amazing. Um, I posted the recognition and um, there was just way too many people to tag. So um, if you can actually see everybody's name and you have anybody in your team or downline, make sure that you tag them and congratulate them because this was a huge month for me. This is a epic month because this is my four year coach anniversary and it's something that I was just telling the new coach that I was doing a one-on-one -on -one call with is that how important the follow-ups are following up with people is like key and essential because if my coach hadn't followed up with me I may not even be here um, I really don't know but I chickened out I didn't want to purchase it because I didn't think that there would be an after picture I didn't think that I could do it but she kept following up with me and I kept making excuses and so she followed up with me twice and um, and I did re I've heard the statistic that you have to ask somebody 12 times to um, finally get a yes I have a couple coaches that um, just joined in this last month that took one and a half to up to three years to say yes so don't give up be here in four years. That's all I can say is be here in four years. And we had an epic month. It was the month of the cup. Um, we had a lot of new people hit success club. A uh, couple people hit Emerald and we're going to see a lot of rank advancements in the next week because a lot of us are um, participating in the push too that have been put together by diesel nation. So, um, March 1st is going to be, um, you have 31 days to do awesome things. I want to, reach more people and help more people than we did in February. If you're one of my personally sponsored coaches, make sure that you're checking the um, foundation of Team Relentless, the personally sponsored coach um, group page, um, the reminders of some incentives that I'm doing for you in the month of March. Also, if you are the highest success club earner and you sponsor four coaches in the month of March, you get that VIP ticket to the Houston core. Um, front and center with Ryan and I, with Sagi, and corporate's going to be there. It's going to be amazing, and you're going to learn a lot of info, so be there. Um, I uh, want to introduce our guest speaker, Lindsay Caterino. She speaks a totally different language than me. Um, we have known each other for years, and we've been Facebook friends. She um, was really a big success story right when I got into this business, and she was doing amazing things. The first time I ever laid eyes on her was my first success club trip in 2013 to Disney and she spoke on stage um, and so did my coach Becky and the success club trip for me that year changed everything in my business so if you have not gotten on the wait list for the Punta Cana uh, trip in January of next year get on it because these events are absolutely life-changing um, Events are huge. But Lindsay and I also had the opportunity to be in the Pio test group together. And I've just watched her um, do amazing things. And then we both spoke at the Atlanta Super Saturday. Another, another thing is April 2nd is Super Saturday. So wherever you are, make sure that you get to one. And if you don't know how to get to one, get with me or your sponsor to find out how to get there. But she's done amazing things. She's hit the Millionaire Club. She has sponsored like Mega Diamonds. And a lot of you do follow um, the top 10 that were just announced. And Megan Ewilson is one of her personally sponsored coaches. Um, what I share all the time is that coaches are introverts. I'm an introvert. I like to talk a lot, but I am an introvert. Um, but this really suits me because I get to help people and I get to just never leave my home if I don't want to. Sometimes I honestly don't go anywhere for six days and, and, I, and I love it, but I get to help people. So I wanted her to get on this call because um, a lot of people don't realize that I'm, a, I'm an introvert and they uh, attribute introverted this with shy people or quiet people so I wanted you to hear from somebody else other than me but she's done way more amazing things than I could ever dream of but I'm shooting for so I'm gonna hand it over to Lindsay you got it girl well thank you for the warm welcome I didn't know you saw me speak at Disney that's cool um, hi everyone uh, I am so honored to be here and you know you guys are on an awesome team um, some people that I've respected for many years and you know it's it's good to be with with friends I uh, I told Mindy that I would I would kind of share my story and talk a bit more about how I've used my personality style to be a benefit to my business um, if you're someone that is terrified of people then 
I am too. <laughs> so we are in good company. Um, I started my career as an accountant. I have all of my higher uh, degrees in mathematics. And I think the reason that I honestly became an accountant was because I didn't want to have to work with people. I, uh, I love spreadsheets more than I like conversation. And I sort of really enjoyed uh, what my first boss called me was the spreadsheet jockey. So I would take large streams of data and I would try to solve business problems against them. At my jobs, I didn't even know my own phone number because no one called me. Like, it was literally like working maybe at like a factory where you do your part and pass it along and they wouldn't notice unless you died in the bathroom. Um, and that was the first 14 years of my career. So I was doing really well. I was someone I was very diligent. I, I had a lot of passion for what I did. I worked on Wall Street. I worked in the Silicon Valley. So I was very quickly 25 years old. I was making over $100,000 a year. Uh, and I thought that I would be an accountant for the rest of my life because I really enjoyed it and I was getting a lot of great opportunities. But I think deep down, I really desired the opportunity to travel. And my job needed me. I like, even though I had a few weeks vacation, I don't know if you, any of you have a job like this, you can't really take it <laughs> because they block out like every possible time that you would leave. And so I ended up with a lot of staycations and maybe like going home for Christmas for two days, you know? And so this, this d deep desire to see something other than Georgia, like <laughs> became greater and greater. So it was like, I had this money and I had this great job, but I had zero freedom. Um, and it was just getting worse as I was promoting. And so I started with Beachbody, like most people, um, I found a program that I really loved. I was, um, about four and a half years ago, I discovered P90X on Craigslist. I had no idea what coaches were. I bought it off Craigslist and decided to do it. My first night, I got through about 32 minutes before I threw up. I don't know if anyone threw up faster than me. I have, I had not worked out in like, five years, like working out was like a walk, you know, and, and it was starting to show like it was, it was one of the, I wasn't ever anyone you'd call fat, but I wasn't going to be out in a bikini anywhere that I wanted people to see me. So it really, for me, P90X was this, this like way of proving to myself that I could do it. So even though I was pretty awful at it, I fell in love with the process. So my college roommate, who is my PS coach, Rebecca Bain, um, reached out to me because I was posting about P90X and she said, are, are you working with a coach? And I said, I have no idea what that means. Um, and she invited me to a challenge group. I did not buy Shakeology. I didn't buy P90X from her, but she helped me. And I think that's a, a foundational part of my story. I would not be here today if I didn't end up in a challenge group and I wouldn't have bought my way into a challenge group. So if you know someone that maybe has a copy of something in their closet and it's like, well, I bought Brazilian butt lift and I never did that. I highly recommend you consider letting them in your challenge group, but that's just my personal opinion. So Rebecca, um, of course, asked me about the coaching opportunity at the time she was Six months into coaching, she had made no money, and she wasn't even Emerald. She'd signed her husband, so she was half Emerald, right? And I was like, that sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Three and a half days later, she wrote me this super long message that I'm pretty sure came from her sponsor. It didn't really answer my question. It was just kind of like this long-winded response as to what a pyramid scheme is, which wasn't my question. It was if Beachbody was. So I just said no. And one thing that Mindy said is part of my story. I was actually asked to coach four months in a row. <laughs> so I said no four times before I said yes. And um, I think we often believe that we need this huge story to join someone to do the coaching. So I'm about to tell you the pitch that worked on me. Now I told you I'm a hundred thousand dollar plus earner. I'm a director of finance. 
And my coach says to me in the month of December, I started a challenge group in August. She goes, I made a hundred dollars this month. This thing is really starting to pick up. And I'm like, a hundred dollars. I could use a hundred dollars. And I started thinking of all the things that an extra hundred dollars would buy me. And the, the tipping point was that I could get my nails done and not have to ask my husband. And it was like, that's it. I was in, I was going to make my hundred dollars a month and I was going to get my nails done free of asking for permission. So I signed up to coach and I made her emeralds. <laughs> After nine months of coaching, she had a rank advancement, and I had no intention of really doing much with the business. But as life would happen, uh, four years ago, my husband got out of the military, and he was supposed to start a job that did not start, and our household income dropped in half. And all of a sudden, this introvert had to find more months than money, right? Like I had more bills than I had money at the end of the month. And the only way that I was going to figure it out was to make money fast. So if you're someone on the line that needs this to work, that was me. I needed this to work. I had, I had my day job, but we had acquired a lot of debt, $85,000 to be exact in debt. Um, and the minimum payments plus our living expenses were more than I took home. So I didn't even do training. <laughs> like, so if you have a coach that's really adverse to training, that was me. Like I just wanted to, to have a challenge group because I was in a challenge group. And so that made sense to me. So I just um, contacted all of my friends on the first day, about 12 or 13 close friends. And I said, you guys know how much I enjoyed P90X. At this point, I'd lost 10 pounds doing P90X. And I'd started to get some people kind of buzzing about it. I said, I want to pay that forward. And I want to do a new group and do P90X alongside of all of you. You can pick any program you want, but I really want you to be in this first group with me. It would mean the world to me. This is something I'm just getting started with. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I will be the best coach that I, you know, I can be. All of them said yes. I had a really big first day. And I realized fast that if I, if I reached out to people and I genuinely wanted to help them, even though I was terrified, that they would see success and I would see success. And so those girls started my first group and they all became coaches within probably like two months. So I went diamond in 90 days. So at this point, my interest was peaked. I really started in my warm market. And I think an introvert belongs in their warm market because cold market means you have to make new friends, which is even scarier than talking to old friends. So if, you know, if you're someone that struggles with talking to people, talk to those people first and get good at it. And then new people won't be as scary. Um, and so I really started to realize that all of a sudden I had to be a leader and I didn't even want to talk on the phone because the phone scared me. Like I didn't do GSR calls for two years because I was terrified of, of using the phone that I would say something really weird and be embarrassed. I didn't make any videos for the first 10 months. And I didn't make my first video until it was literally, I was in a training group and I was going to be kicked out of the group if I didn't make a video. That was the only thing that got me to make the video. And the worst part, I was number 19 in the company at that point, And I still didn't want to make a video. So, you know, if these are types of things that you struggle with, I did too. And the best advice I have is practice. Practice doesn't necessarily make perfect, but it makes you more confident to do it again. And so the more videos I made, the more comfortable I became on, on a camera. I'll never be comfortable on a video, but they're a lot better than they used to be. Um, and then Beachbody started really scaring the shit out of me and they made me stand on stage. Disney was actually the first time that I had to speak in front of a group of people more than eight. I don't know about any of you. Do you love public speaking? Cause I would rather, you know, get a root canal, but I very quickly realized that I had to open my mouth that people deserved to hear that there were coaches that weren't all the same and that it was okay to be an accountant 
introvert and still be a successful beach body coach. Now I aspire to be an extroverted um, fitness. I'm still not a fitness person, by the way. I press play, but I don't love fitness. I will never become a, a bar. I wish, I wish. I just, I'm, you know, it's not my favorite thing to do, but it's important to me to be healthy. But I think that we get wrapped up in looking at a couple really poised, extroverted coaches that I would love to wake up one day and be too, and think that that's the only way that we're going to be successful. And the truth is, it's not. Um, when I sponsored Megan E. Wilson, she was she is an introvert too, by the way, very, and she lacked a lot of confidence. But over time, with practice, she became more comfortable with you know, her social media and talking to other people. But when she got pushed on stage in Atlanta, she was in a cold sweat. She actually had to bring um, dog up with her because she said that she couldn't do it without him. So, you know, maybe that gives some of you some hope that even someone that's in the top 10 is like, I don't want to stand on stage and talk to people. Um, so, you know, what, how can I, you know, I'd really more share my story as to be of assistance than anything else. The first thing that I would say to you is that introverts make great listeners. So extroverts make horrible listeners. I spend a good portion of my mentorship with my PS coaches getting my extroverts to stop steamrolling people <laughs> because they want to control the conversation. They never listen to what the person has to say. And so if you're someone that's an introvert, just ask questions. I learned very quickly that you want, when you're in an invitation conversation or you're in a forum conversation, anything where you're trying to reach out to people and see if maybe a challenge group would be a good fit or see if coaching would be a good fit, Ask more questions than you share. People love to talk about themselves. And though they might say to you, so how's your job? They don't really mean it. So like answer very briefly and get back to them. So one sentence about you for every four sentences about them and they will write you back so fast you can't even answer your email. And the more that they talk with you, you just establish a deeper level of trust. And then I often get asked, how do you convert the conversation, right? You're talking and talking because now you're being an introvert and you're just listening and listening and they just can't, you know, even contain themselves. I always say, I don't know if this would be a good fit for you or not. Now that's the shy side of me saying, I'm just going to put my toe in the water right now and then I'm going to attach my invitation. But I thought that you might enjoy whatever you want to invite them to, your free clean eating group, to your um, upcoming PIO group, to the, I don't know, you might be doing an opportunity webinar or a sneak peek group, fill in the blank. Tell them why you think they might enjoy it. But I always start with that. I don't know if this would be something you'd be interested in or not, or you might enjoy or not, because they're going to feel really comfortable writing you back and saying yes or no. And then from there, you can deem whether that's an objection or it's just not the right time. Um, a lot of people, it's not the right time. I'd say about 50-50. Some, you know, some just say yes. I've had a lot of people just say, yeah, I've been meaning to ask you about that. And then I'm like, oh, thank God, you know? Um, but if you do get a no or no, um, no, I always like to plan my follow-up. Because as an introvert, I don't want to follow up with people unless they're expecting it. So I'll say, you know what? I'll message you again next month. Maybe it'll be a better time. They will never fight you because they just want you to stop talking to them. So, but you just then plan to reach out to them again in a month. And you've set the expectation that you're going to do that. So it feels a lot more comfortable if you're someone that's shy than literally just reaching out to someone over and over again without them expecting to hear from you. So make a point to say, hey, I'm going to, you know, any objection. Like I've had people say, no, I'm not interested in your PIO group. I'm doing couch to 5K right now. Awesome. You know what? I, I would love to hear about how that's going. I'm going to follow up with you in two weeks and see what you think of the program. Done. I'm going to follow up with them now. So you can follow up about anything. <laughs> like, 
just look for a reason to follow up because the longer that you have a conversation, the better chance you have of finding a connection. And a connection point is that they do need something that you have. Um, but I have found, uh, you know, I had a really, I've had a really big four years. I've been coaching about a lot, as long as Mindy. And this year, my goal is to hit a million dollars in one year. The million dollar, the millionaires club is actually a million dollars since you've been coaching. But the way that I'm going to get there is by building really strong relationships. You want to have people on your side that are either referring customers to you or they are your best customers or they're your coaches or your best coaches, right? Like this is all about growing together and um, being a tribe and, and, and serving people well and, you know, sharing our mission. Not everyone is going to be on your team, but if you keep a good, healthy, open talking relationship with people, a lot of them will introduce you to people that would be a better fit. So another way that, that I, you know, I keep my warm market warm because I don't like to talk to people I don't know <laughs> is that I ask for referrals and, um, of, I have 13 diamonds right now. I would say half of them came from my warm market, but they were a referral from someone I knew. So the person I knew didn't want to coach, but because I established trust, because I was a great listener, because I went through the invitation process and got a few no's, they introduced me to someone that said yes. And one thing about um, referrals that's really powerful is that the minute that you're introduced to someone as a referral, trust is established because it's passed from the person they know to you. So Megan was actually a referral. And many people had asked her to coach in the past, and she had said no. This was actually, she told Carl Deichler this, um, um, super started. She said that the reason that she became a coach under me was because my best friend, Aubrey, connected us. Aubrey saw that um, Megan needed a job. She had just moved and she was a spin instructor and she couldn't find a spin instructor job in her new location. Aubrey saw that post and private messaged both of us and said, Megan, I don't know if you've ever heard about the Beachbody coaching opportunity, but my best friend Lindsay has had a lot of success, you know, um, working her fitness business part time. At this point, I had only been doing it a year. And she just kind of made that connection point for us. Megan never had any objections and she signed up within an hour. Like it was one of the easiest signups I ever had. I had no idea that she had said no to everyone else that had ever asked because she didn't trust them. Well, how did she trust me? Because she trusted Aubrey. So if you're someone that is good to people and you keep your warm market warm, even someone who you know is absolutely, totally, positively disinterested in everything that we represent, they might know someone that would be an amazing fit. So it's still important to keep those conversations going. So that's really how I use introversion as a, I think, a tool. Um, I'm never going to be someone that's going to be able to do this in a way that, you know, I'm, I'm not the type of person that's going to stop someone in the grocery store that's shopping for avocados and ask them if they've ever tried Shakeology. Like, it just, this is not going to happen. I, I, there's not enough personal development available um, for me to, to grow that much from introversion to extroversion. But I think that it's important to um, celebrate your strengths and, and, and use them to your advantage because there's a lot, we all do this differently and we can all be successful. And I'm open to questions, Mindy, if that's uh, something you want to do. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I just kind of wanted to recap because I know some people came on this call, you know, after it got started. It, the, the key points that I heard was, number one, she ordered off of Craigslist and she never purchased from anybody. And so I hear this all the time from people like, oh, my God, my coworker, I was telling him all about blah, blah, blah. And they went order off of Amazon, eBay. And people, I've had coaches get pissed and call people names. And the thing is. Uh, I know tons of top coaches like Kim Lima ordered insanity off of uh, uh, eBay. And now she's one of Danielle Natoni's, you know, 
rock stars. So the thing is, don't ever sell yourself short. And the same thing is, invite, always have something to invite somebody to. And this is one thing that um, I'm going to be talking about a lot in our training group that starts on the 7th. It's a brand new um, training that I put together that I think that you guys will like. Um, but that was one thing that I was sharing with my coach that I just got off a of one-on-one -on -one with before I got on this call, was that the challenge groups are really where you Build your leaders. When you are doing, how you run your challenge groups is where, number one, you're gonna find your leaders, the people who are, you're gonna see the ones who have great transformations, who are openly sharing, who are competitive, because I do little friendly competitions in between. Those coaches do really good. And also, when you're running your challenge groups, you have, I always go in mind with the way I run my challenge groups is that this is the way I want to find my coaches and also train my coaches because the way you run your challenge groups is great. That if you sign them up it, before their Shakeology ships on day 30 and they decide to become a, a coach and you tell them all about the opportunity and they get a discount, blah, 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 blah. Well, then they start running their business and the first thing you do is tell them to start a challenge group. And if you are one of those people that doesn't check into your challenge group often, if you don't have any call to actions, if you don't do any assignments, if you don't have any expectations, guess what? They're going to duplicate exactly what you did. So make sure that you are like amping up everything in your challenge group. Trust me, I literally just figured this out in November. So if your challenge groups have been kind of sucky or whatever and you know and like kind of what lindsay said we're we've been in this business for four years and we learn as we as we go and i love what she said too with so many people uh do all this personal development trying to you know boost their weaknesses and that's one thing that john maxwell said in one of uh, one of his conferences that i i went to at summit of 2013 i think is he said it's better to actually sharpen your skills that you're strong at than to even try to mess with your weak weak points you know and, but there are some things that i think do hold us back that we could get over but you know there's things just by nature the same thing as i'm an introvert like i literally could not leave my house you know, and be just fine. I have social anxiety. However, I love teaching. As a child, I wanted to be a teacher. So now because of Beachbody, I am allowed to be a teacher. Whenever I got up on stage in Atlanta where her and Megan and I were all at, they both were very nervous. I was there because I had found my passion and been able to do what I wanted to do since I was a child is teach. So even though I'm an introvert, I love to get on stage and share value with people. So understand that there's two ways of this you may discover your side that loves to be on stage and but you still are an introvert or you may just realize that you're willing to go on stage and share your story because you are selfless enough to teach people via your story but you're never going to love it but the big thing is is we all come in different shapes sizes personalities and we all can be successful and the thing is no matter what our struggle is you can always find a way to overcome it and so Make sure that you don't settle for, oh, I'm shy, I'm always gonna be shy, I'm not going to be good at this business, because you can. You, you can just find creative ways to do it, and we have social media now that allows us to do it. So um, if nobody has any questions, thank you, Lindsay, because I know, like you said, uh, you are not big on these type of things, so I know that it was, um, it was I really appreciate it. Does anybody have any yeah. questions? I left them speechless, thank you. Um, if you end up having any questions, feel free to come follow me on my personal Facebook page. I don't use my <laughs> fan page because I don't like meeting people I don't know. Um, but just to kind of touch on something that Mindy said, it's important to find a way that you expand your contact list, right? Like my business would not be here today if I didn't expand my contact list. But it doesn't mean you have to do things you don't like. So find something that works for you. For me, um, and my national coach call was on referrals. If, if you really want to deep dive into that, um, I work with my referral market, it's very important to me, and I like to volunteer in my community. So that's how I expand my contact list. So maybe you know Instagram or your Facebook fan page is your thing, and that's totally cool. But th that's, I guess, what I wanted you know, to say, it's like, there are things that I've had to get over, like 
inviting and objections and you know and that all of that was scary but as long as you have one area of each of the vital behaviors that's working for you and when I think of invite I think of okay you need people to invite <laughs> you can't do it if you don't have people right like that's like the unspoken part of that vital behavior then don't feel like you have to become awesome at something that you don't like uh, you know so um, maybe because Mindy doesn't like to leave her house, she may not be an Instagram superstar. You know, that's kind of Instagram. They kind of like to see beaches and things, you know, be who you are. Like she shouldn't have to feel like she has to travel to exotic places just to like make it on Instagram. Um, and, but this is so important to just be you, but make it about them. Be a servant to other people, help people to the best of your ability. But if my coach didn't help me, I wouldn't be here today. And my team maxes out the volume of one of her legs. So I think she got her monies back from my Craigslist thing, you know? So it's like, see the big picture, like helping someone, they could be a huge influencer. Maybe I was just someone that was going to introduce her to the next big thing. Who knows? But it's just, you know, it, there are some things we do need to get over, but do it in a way that feels authentic for you. But thanks for having me. And I, I want to piggyback off. Of, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I want to piggyback off of what you said too. Is that I want to remind everybody. I hear this all the time. Well, I only got one success club point, or I, you know, I didn't hit success club, and then people become so discouraged that they didn't hit success club five or ten that they forget about that one person they helped. And I always tell people, if you only have one person that month, then make them your baby and pour everything into them because literally that's how you go in this business is by referrals and you build your reputation. If you just sell shit to people or get success club points, but you don't help them and you don't put some skin in the game, you're never going to have a good reputation as a coach. I, I was thinking about that two challenge packs that were sold this month. One was a size kickstart. One was a, uh, a 21 or no, a pio kickstart. We're all off of referrals from one person that is not even my customer. And one of them became a coach in this Emerald already in the first month. So the thing is, if you treat people good, and even in this little teeny tiny town that I live in, I found two new people that referred to me in this town because I help people because even after I had a really horrible 2015, I made a good comeback and people know that I'm in it and they know that I believe in it, in it and that I'm passionate about it. So it's so important that you treat these people great. And even if they're your free customers, set them out to make sure that they are going to be your next coach and share things on your page that are teaching people. And you know, one of the, the coaches I just got the, call with before this call she told me no when I, I asked her and I was scared to death to ask her because I don't ever oh, I hate to even admit this I rarely go and invite people people just have always came to me because I'm good with people and so I, my goal in February is to step out of my comfort zone so I started cold inviting people for the first time in four years and I did and then she said no and she kind of gave me like this you know different objection I never heard. And then I said in my head, okay, I have two options. So what I did is for two whole weeks, I made sure that all of my posts were basically that I was posting to her. And you know what? She came on board. She hit success club in three days. She hit success club eight and four days. And now she's going for diamond in a month. So, you know, get around your challenges. That's all I have to say. So thank you again, Lindsay. Thank you. It was awesome meeting you guys. Take care. All right. See you guys.